Seventy years ago, these huts were the location of some of the most technologically advanced research and development taking place anywhere in the world. Today they are the home of the National Museum of Computing here at Bletchley Park. Bletchley Park co-breaking veterans were present at the opening of a museum gallery dedicated to recognising the technological achievements of the men and women who worked there during World War II. The centrepiece of the gallery is a fully functioning rebuild of a tunny machine that produced the final decrypts of enciphered German high command communications between 1942 and 1945. The original Tunny, a British re-engineering of the then unseen German Lorenz S42 cipher machine, was completed in 1942. With only fragmentary information about the original, the rebuilt and functioning Tunny has recently been completed by a volunteer team at the National Museum of Computing. When the pioneering Colossus computer was completed in 1944, it supplied the wheel settings data that Tunnies needed much quicker than earlier techniques, and the number of Tunny machines was increased. By 1945, between 12 and 15 Tunnies were working 24-7, deciphering 300 messages a week and providing vital intelligence for the Allied war effort. The centrepiece event of the Tunny Gallery opening was a live working reenactment of the interception to decryption process performed with the help of volunteers in authentic period uniform. The first major project in this area or H block was the rebuild of the Colossus computer. Um, but one has to remember that this is a three stage process. This is from intercept to decrypt of the German high command teleprinter signals and messages. Um, having rebuilt Colossus, of which I was part of the team, um, we then had to um, rebuild the other two components of the three stage process, uh, one of which is the radio receiver racks to my right and uh, the tiny machine to my left. Um, and we started those around about three years ago. This is filling in the gap, so we're now, at long last, able to have, um, a, be able to demonstrate to the public the three-stage process, and more importantly, with working machinery. Um, all, this, all this equipment is not just uh, idle, it, it actually operates, as it did in the war. It does the job. The biggest challenges we faced was, one, sourcing the circuit diagrams, which we've which already mentioned. Um, secondly, was to make sure that uh, as we progressed uh, through the building of this machine, this tiny machine, the decryption machine, that we tested each phase very, very carefully before we proceeded to the next stage, um, because there's some very, very complex wiring in there. There must be at least 4,000 solder joints uh, at the back of that machine and, and great, very, very large cable forms. And so the challenges that we had was to make sure that for each stage we tested thoroughly before we moved on to the next. Had we not done that, we might have had to go right back to the beginning when we reached the end, which would have been extremely unfortunate. It works exactly as it did in wartime. You can actually type in the, the cipher text uh, on, the, on the teleprinter table there and the machine um, will actually uh, strip out the obscuring characters and produce the clear text. Right, we're engineers, we love a challenge, but at the end of the day, one of our prime motivating factors is to leave a legacy here, not our legacy, but a legacy and a tribute to those people who worked uh, here on this process during the war. The launch reunited four Tunney veterans, such as senior cryptologist Jerry Taylor. He recalled some of Tunney's early successes, including one communique confirming that the information being obtained came from the very top of the German command structure. And I can still remember the excitement when the first message signed Hitler was broken. Adolf Spacer, Hitler Spacer, Führer Spacer. I should think that rocked them a bit the first time they received it. This was the beginning of everything, the beginning of the computer. Um, nobody realises it, nobody makes much fuss about it. Um, everything was primitive. We had to work out our own methods for breaking these messages. And there were, it was the first time ever for each of these processes. So you were breaking entirely new ground? Absolutely new ground. And it was great fun.